کشته سم جفا شد خاتم پیغمبران کشته سم جفا شد خاتم پیغمبران از غم هستی رها شد خاتم پیغمبران the calamity of the Thursday is an event that broke the heart of Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas, the Prophet's cousin, narrates it. The Prophet sallallahu when he was dying, he ordered the Muslims to leave and join the army of Osama ibn Zayd to fight against the Romans. The Romans again had prepared their armies and so Osama had taken the men. The Prophet ﷺ said all men must join Osama except for Bani Hashim. Bani Hashim stay behind. And then he mentioned that famous hadith man an Osama. May Allah deprive his mercy from the ones who do not join the army of Osama. Interestingly, some people did not join the army of Osama. And the question is, why? And that is truly an intriguing question. If the Prophet ﷺ said, you have to join the army of Osama, except for Bani Hashim. So Bani Hashim are staying behind. Everyone else must be with the army of Osama. Now, in the calamity of Thursday, it tells us that an individual was not there among the army of Osama. Ibn Abbas says, and he was crying when he was telling this hadith, crying, to the point where his tears started to wet the pebbles that he was standing on. You know, there was pebbles underneath him. That's how much he was crying, that the pebbles became wet. And he was like, Raziya to Yawm al Khamis. You know what a calamity it was. And he was crying. They asked him, What is it? What happened? Sahih al Bukhari says the following. This is how Sahih al Bukhari narrates it. That he says, Ibn Abbas says, The Prophet was on his deathbed. And he asked the Muslims for a writing instrument, you know, duat, and what we call today like something to write on. Ketif. Ketif, at the time, they used to write also on the shoulder of uh, the camel. You know, paper was not something that was common at that time. So they used to write on the shoulder of the camel, or sometimes on leather, for example, on skin. On the shoulder of the camel was a big, it's a bit large, so some people used to use it for writing. So he said, Atuni bi ketifin wa duat. You know, like a paper and pen, for example, in, in today's language so that I can write for you a will that you will never go astray. Interestingly, you'll never go astray once you adhere to this will. The Prophet ﷺ, according to Sahih Muslim, says, I am leaving amongst you Muslims. This is prior to this incident. I am leaving amongst you two things, the Book of Allah and my progeny, عترتي, أهل بيتي, not Sunnati, refer to Sahih Muslim. Aitrati, he says, my progeny. Allah Allah bi ahli bayti. Allah Allah bi ahli bayti. Allah Allah bi ahli bayti. As narrated in Sahih Muslim. That take care of my family, take care of my family. I'm leaving amongst you two things. The book of Allah and Sunnah. And in another, other narrations, if you hold on to these two things, you will never go astray. When those people who are standing there heard that the Prophet wants to write something down here so that they will never go astray, well, guess what? Put two and two together. The Prophet apparently is trying to officially, in writing, write down that Ali and his family are to be full, you know, followed. Now, some people argued, they said, well, the Prophet did not know how to read and write. So when he was asking for paper and pen, you know, he's probably hallucinating. Well, iadu billah, God forbid. Our argument is when he says, get, get me a paper and pen or the equivalent of paper and pen. It's not necessarily that he was the one who was going to write it. He was dictate. Abdullah ibn Abbas was there. You know, other people were there. So he could have dictated it. So that argument does not hold. Now, 
the man was standing there, according to Bukhari, a man said, غلب عليه الوجع that the pain has overtaken him. In other words, والعياذ بالله, he's hallucinating. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So don't get him. So he stopped the paper and the pen to be delivered to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And apparently he did it in such a way that he was not by himself. There were others with him. He just was the one who was vocal about it. And he said, حَسْبُنَا كِتَابُ الله. The book of Allah is enough for us. That's how Sahih al-Bukhari narrates the incident. Sahih Muslim puts the name. He says, قَالَ عُمَرَ غَلَبَ عَلَيْهِ الْوَجَعَ Umar ibn al-Khattab says that the pain has overtaken him. Question. If the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Unfudu jaysha Usama, you should follow the army of Usama. Why is Umar ibn al-Khattab still in Medina? When the Prophet also says, may Allah deprive his mercy from those who do not follow the army of Usama. And I'll leave that question up to the respected viewers to answer. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the minute he says something, it becomes indoctrinated. Allah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Male and female believers, whenever Allah or His Messenger mandate something, dictate something, say something, خلاص, then they have no choice to argue against it. The Prophet ﷺ did not need to put anything in writing. His words are enough. He, however, wanted to demonstrate to the Muslims on his deathbed that look at those people and look who they are. First of all, subhanAllah, history has recorded that those people remained even after Rasulullah ordered them to join the army of Osama. So maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to demonstrate this, so history records it. Yes, the Prophet could have written it, maybe even that the time of the Risala. Because Allah had told him that Imam Ali alayhi salam would be his successor. However, Allah, Rasulullah wanted to demonstrate now that he has said the event of Ghadir, the, he has officially declared Imam Ali alayhi salam as his successor. On his deathbed, he wanted to make his will. Now that he is dying, he wanted to put it in writing. This event, the Prophet ﷺ wanted to demonstrate that look at these people and look what they have done. Interestingly, my dear brother and my dear viewers, I would like to also mention this incident. There is an individual who's written a book called Warakiptu Safina. His name is Marwan Khalifat. Marwan says, I was not of the follower of Ahlul Bayt alayhim I was studying in the Islamic college in a Muslim country. With us was a Shia who was studying in that same Islamic college in that particular country. We knew he was a Shia, but he was studying in this college kind of university studies. One day he said, I was kind of talking to him and I really wanted to kind of fix his beliefs, correct his theology by making him of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So I started having a conversation with him and we were friends. Then he looked at me and said, listen, before we really engage in this discussion, what I would really like you to answer me is one thing. He said, what? Explain to me Raziya to Yawm al Khamis. Describe to me the tragedy of the Thursday. If you can really answer that question for me, would you allow anyone to say something like this about your Prophet Would you accept that from anybody? to say or suggest that he is hallucinating. This man said, I was shocked. I said, what is this? What happened? He said, you know what? Go back to Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Read about it and then come back and explain it to me. 
He says, when I went back, I read it, I was in a shock. How could this person, whom I revere so highly, whom I respect so greatly, have said something like this against my prophet? Would I have accepted this from anyone else? And he says, when I met my friend, I told him, you know what, I have no answer. I'm speechless. He says, so what, what do you think? He says, that was the start of my journey to become the follower of Ahlul Bayt alayhim The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wanted that history to be documented, that incident to be documented. So people who have some enlightened hearts and minds, like this individual who followed the path of Ahlul Bayt because of that one incident. And hence the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa possibly did not do it earlier, did not do it later, because he really wanted history to document this incident at that stage, at that point when he is leaving this dunya, so that people can discover the truth and follow the truth. <laughs> خاتم پیغمبران از غم هستی رها شد خاتم پیغمبران